Yuta Okotsu is back. The goal of this video is to cope and glaze so effectively that I literally will Yuta back into the story. I'm like the Takaba of Jujutsu Kaisen theory crafting. As long as I legitimately believe the nonsense that I'm spouting, I can literally force it into reality. Lots of you guys seem to enjoy my Sukuna and Yuji theory videos, but I have noticed a large increase in requests for me to do some more Yuta glazing, which made me realize how much of a letdown I have become. This channel's very existence is a result of my special grade Yuta glazing and its overwhelming intensity. So for the first time in a while, Sukuna is going to get put on the back burner and my main focus will once again be on the strongest sorcerer in the history of the world, Yuta Okotsu. Plus, Sukuna's story is now over since Miguel's about to beat him so hard he turns back into a finger. So let's get straight into why Yuta Okotsu is about to return with a brand new toy that will shake Sukuna to his core. Now, I still think Yuta has absolutely had the most impact since Gojo when fighting Sukuna, since he did achieve his goal of allowing Yuji to save Fushiguro. Plus, it's not Yuta's fault that Megami wanted to sleep in, and despite that, he kept his cool and proceeded with the next stage of the plan, signalling Maki followed by a sprinkle of death. However, even the strongest Sukuna Glazer sense that something is a little bit off here. Yuta's death was very rushed and he got no moment of real respect or impact, unlike Gojo, Kashimo and Higuruma. The last time a character supposedly died so suddenly was Chozo and he returned like four chapters later. Yuta was also taken by Wiwi instantly and he's the only one anyone has suggested could still make it when Maki says, even if Okotsu survives, indicating that she believes it is actually a possibility. And remember, characters like Maki have more information on what's going on in Shoko's human reconstruction workshop than we do. There's also the arrival of Miguel, a character who only really has ties to Gojo and Yuta. If you don't think Miguel's purpose here is to make Yuta the ultimate Sukuna killing, walking, talking weapon, then you have clearly been reading Kukutsu Jaisen instead. Well, either that or you're mentally stable, and I very much doubt a JJK fan is capable of that. Anyway, Miguel is going to play a very key role in Yuta's return and the fight moving forward. And no, it is not random. It's actually been suggested that there has always been some mysterious serious influence from an overseas party, in addition to indications that the Six Eyes still have a very significant role to play. And the one who told us all about these important things was Tengen. In fact, Tengen gave us a load of information, which at the time seemed like insignificant context. But I am now realising that it is vital to the story and to many of our injured characters moving forward. So now I'm going to take you back to our post Shibuya chat with Tengen in order to show you why Yuta and Miguel were always going to be important. Following the Shibuya incident right at the beginning of the Culling Games, Yuji Itadori, Megami Fushiguro, Maki Zenin, Yuki Tsukumo, Chozo, and Yuta Okotsu all went to confront Tengen in the Tomb of the Star. The following chapters are basically just Tengen dumping a load of information and context on us that I feel wasn't appropriately appreciated at the time. A a appro appropriately appro appropriately appreciate appre it wasn't appreciated. <laughs> I rarely see anyone talk about what Tengen told us, so I'ma take it upon myself to highlight the most important parts, and then use my innate technique to convert the information into special grade Yuta Glaze. So there are two key things Tengen says that we're gonna focus on, one being the significance of the six eyes to Tengen and Kenjaku, and the other being Tengen's subtle nods towards Miguel's background and Africa's potential significance in the story. So Tengen is a sorcerer with an immortality curse technique dating all the way back to the Nara era before the Heian era. Since Tengen knew Kenjaku, and Kenjaku is likely responsible for founding the Star Religious Group, it's it's likely that he also dated back to the Nara era too. Every 400 or so years, Tengen needs to merge with a special soul called a Star Plasma Vessel in order to prevent evolution and protect the world from a big, angry Tengen monster or some other dangerous, mystical shit. Kenjaku, being the troll he is, simply wants to prevent the mergers and cause Tengen to evolve and lose control for simple shits and giggles. You know, as you do. Fucking psychopath. Anyway, Tengen continues to explain how themselves, the Star Plasma Vessels, and the Six Eyes are all closely bound together by fate. The Six Eyes are a trait you are born with, and they can only ever be one user at a time, and they all come about whenever Tengen needs to merge with a Star Plasma Vessel. The Six Eyes are also inherited by Gojo Clan members, who are descendants of Sugawara Michizane, just like Yuta. Something I find interesting is whether previous Six Eyes users always have Limitless. Obviously Limitless is the best to have the Six Eyes with, but I do wonder if any other techniques could be paired with it. I have seen things saying that there is always a Six Eyes user. A Six Eyes and Limitless user, however, only appears around every 400 or so years. This would explain why Kenjaku said to have fought, killed, and sealed multiple six eyes users, since it only said that he faced six eyes users and not six eyes and limitless users. A six eye and limitless user is an even rarer but stronger threat, hence why Gojo is likely the strongest to ever use them, challenged only by Sugawara Michizane who also had both and may actually contest Gojo. This isn't really important here, it's just more of a fun thing for you to think about, you know? This small amount of information is all we know about the nature of the six eyes, but what Tengen makes painfully obvious is that fate or some other higher power is influencing everything to do with the six eyes and Tengen's merger. Now since there is a clear interference of a higher power, trying to claim that the six eyes can only ever be gained at birth is foolishly naive, especially given what Tengen says next. Tengen explains how Kenjaku has twice been defeated by users of the six eyes.
Eyes. After that, Kenjaku started killing both Six Eyes and Star Plasma vessels as newborns, yet somehow they still appeared on the day of the merger. And that's it. That's the most that they elaborate on that absolutely game-changing bombshell. Somehow they appear when needed, even though Kenjaku killed those born with them due to the mysterious interference of this so-called power called Fate. How anyone who has read this can genuinely claim that it's impossible for anyone to gain the Six Eyes unless you are born with them is completely beyond me. It is outright stated by Tengen that logic should be completely ignored here since a higher power, otherwise known as Fate, ensures that somehow a Six Eyes user always appears on the day of the merger. Now pair this with the fact that Gojo is dead along with Yuta being related to Gojo and Sugawara Michizane. It makes the idea of Yuta somehow gaining the Six Eyes through Fate entirely possible. He would then also be able to use a copied version of Limitless as effectively as Gojo, including Infinity, Red, and even Infinite Void as a domain expansion. Infinity in Red is possible because, like Gojo, Yuta is a Jujutsu genius who has mastered reverse curse technique, and Infinite Void because Yuta can make any copy technique is guaranteed hit. Not only is this suggested by Tengen's story to be completely possible, but it would also result in the awakening of Yuta as a six eyes limitless user who massively surpasses the strength of both Gojo and Sugawara Michizane. And why is this, you ask? Well, my young and pathetically nerdy student. Well, my wonderful and eager viewers, it's because Yuta is already one of the strongest sorcerers of all time. It's the same concept as Kenjaku being blatantly stronger than Ghetto, despite Ghetto being hella strong due to him effectively being a massively improved version with techniques besides curse manipulation. Yuta has Rika, the Queen of Curses. He has a stockpile of special grade curse techniques, a complete domain and a deep understanding for reverse curse technique. Combine this with his natural genius, the Six Eyes and Limitless, and you are left with a sorcerer far more versatile than Satoru Gojo could ever be. Not to mention the fact that his five minute time limit only exists due to his own ability to hold the connection being limited. Unlike Kakari's four minutes, it's not set in stone, and it's very possible that the Six Eyes could help him either increase or totally remove the time limit on his connection to Rika. But admittedly, this idea is significantly less supported by evidence and more so me just speculating and making theories. Now, if my previous argument for why this is totally possible wasn't enough for you, then let me try a little bit harder. Being the absolutely massive brain guy that Kenjaku is, he started to seal rather than kill Six Eyes users in order to stop them from somehow popping back up on the day of the merger. This is so smart because there cannot be two Six Eyes users alive at the same time and sealed people are still very much alive. The two key pieces of evidence supporting Yuta's upcoming awakening are the fact that two users can't coexist and the Six Eyes always appear on the day of Tengen's merger. Gojo being dead remains one obstacle limiting Yuta's ability to gain the Six Eyes. The other is the fact that the current day in Jujutsu Kaisen is also likely to be the same day that Tengen undergoes some type of merger. Since I see no scenario where either side backs off and reconvenes at a later date, I think it all gets concluded right here, right now. So if there were ever going to be perfect conditions to allow Yuta this awakening, it's right now. However, an obvious problem is that I think Sukuna cannot handle a fight harder than Gojo right now. Megami also still needs saving, and our other main character should really be the one to rival Sukuna. Well, don't worry, because I have a perfectly reasonable line of reasoning. Wait, no. Well, don't worry, because I have a perfectly justified line of reasoning for how all of this is still possible. I have always viewed Itadori as a sort of parallel of Sukuna, and Okotsu a parallel of Gojo. Okay, I don't know if parallel is actually the right word, but you get what I mean. Like, they're similar or closely linked or, or whatever, you get the point. Itadori's unbreakable soul rivals Sukuna's, and the two characters are very uniquely linked in that Sukuna deeply despises Yuji, which is probably the most he has ever given a shit about another character. Also, they legit look like they're related. Now, Yuta is always talked about as Gojo's successor as the strongest, something he would be if he gained Gojo's abilities, meaning that Yuta will be the one responsible for tying up the loose ends in Gojo's story. And those loose ends are probably not Sukuna, but Tengen, since it was Gojo and the Six Eyes that failed to ensure Tengen never became a threat to the world. So my theory is that the Yuji and Sukuna narrative will continue and eventually lead to the final threat of Tengen, which is where our co-main character and Gojo's successor will awaken and finish that story for good. Of course, the only downside to this theory, which a lot of people won't like, is that it does mean Gojo is probably going to stay dead. But honestly, I don't care. I think it's perfect the way he went out and Yuta taking over his role is perfectly fine by me. It's also entirely possible that Yuta returns to help Yuji earlier on, but if he does, I doubt it will be with this broken ass power up. Because I can't lie, I do not think current Sukuna would stand a chance against a limitless six size Yuta Okotsu. But it is Gege after all, so who knows. As for how Yuta is going to survive that world dividing slash and return to the fight, I believe Miguel has helped in some way already before saving Wee Wee and confronting Sukuna. In his yap session, Tengen keeps subtly mentioning a place overseas. They say that the front of the prison realm used by Kenjaku was originally found beyond his barriers overseas. He also mentions how Gojo possibly hid the inverted spear of heaven overseas. Since Japan is the only place that really has sorcerers due to how Tengen's barriers 
works, you do kind of have to wonder how things like Prison Realm ended up overseas. And the only overseas place- Okay, I've said overseas too much, fuck. And the only place not in Japan- The only non- Okay, right, no, we're sticking with it. And the only overseas place we know to have an actual group of foreign sorcerers is where Miguel is from in Africa. We also know that Miguel is hella strong because he did fight Gojo and come out of it completely unscathed. He was also trusted to train Yuta back up to the second strongest special grade all the way from being a grade four. And Miguel's also strong simply because Gege says so. Maybe Miguel had the prison realm in Africa and then brought it over to give it to Ghetto and that's how Kenjaku found it. The idea is though that Tengen's suggestion that there is some overseas involvement in the plot of Jujutsu Kaisen leads me to believe that Miguel and his clan are the overseas party that Tengen keeps talking about. Gojo probably recognized their significance and their strength as well as any potential secrets they kept concerning Jujutsu, hence why he sent Yuta to train there. I definitely have more to say in regards to Miguel, but this is Yuta's video, so the only points that matter are the ones supporting Miguel's ties to Yuta. Since Miguel was Yuta's teacher, and only Yuta's, I see no reason for him to really get involved in this fight unless it is to directly help Yuta. That being said though, Miguel hella strong and will seriously surprise Sukuna as he buys as much time as possible. As with anything JJK related, there is a lot of information here and I always do my best to try and structure it as efficiently as possible. However, sometimes I get lost in the glaze, so I will end the video with a brief summary. Basically, fate ensures that there is always a six size user present on the day of the merger. Gojo being dead and Yuta being related to Gojo allows for fate to work its beautiful magic and give Yuta Okotu the six eyes. And we also know that Yuta is capable of copying the limitless technique, meaning he can have both. Now Yuta may heal up and return to help fight Tsukuna, but he will only have his six eyes awakening once Tengen becomes the real problem. Having fulfilled Gojo's wish of surpassing him and not having to fight alone, Yuta will lead the battle against a whatever form of Tengen merger Gege cooks up and finally put Gojo's story to rest. I think Miguel also likely has a role to play in Yuta surviving the world dividing slash and buying him some time against Sukuna. So in conclusion, Yuta has been successfully glazed for an entire video and I can sleep easy now. I really hope you Yuta fans enjoyed the video and I hope you Yuta haters really despise the video. Get out! Nah, I'm kidding, I hope you all enjoyed it. Also be sure to follow me over on Twitter, link in the description below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you soon for a chapter 255 stream.